Okay, here we are with Tommy Searle. We're going to quickly talk through the championship thus far up to this point. Um, it's been an absolute cracker. Round one was actually the AX Festival way back last year. You came out of that with the Championship League. Quick run, get run through of that, because that, that was a great event. Mm, that's my favourite one. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah, believe it or not, that's my favourite round. Um, AX Fest, unbelievable weekend, wasn't it? Absolutely loved it. Three nights. Um, I won two of the three. Got second in the, I don't know whether it's the middle night or the final night, I can't remember. But, um, and then they accumulated the points and gave us one round for the three evenings. Um, and I come out on top of that one, but uh, it went downhill quite quickly after that one. It did. In that time, you had a quick, not change of team, change it's still Kawasaki, but yeah. a different team name. Came out in Manchester. Um, obviously, looking back at that, Brunel took his first ever yeah. race win and starts as well. Um, Kulas finished second, Woodcock third. That didn't go quite as no. well for you. Round two in Manchester is where I had a crash. Um, the qualifying went well that weekend. I was first. And then I felt good, new team, um, a new bike, still Kawasaki, but it was the 24, which um, I actually love. And um, disappointed I didn't get with the race because I felt so much better on that bike than last year. Um, and uh, I crashed out shortly after that, I had to go to the, or I got uh, took out in one of the heat races, lost my gear lever, so I couldn't continue. Um, went to the LC, went to the head to heads, and I crashed on my own in a head-to-head, -head, um, so no one to blame but myself for that. And then that saw me out, I had to have an operation on my thumb, um, and that was my series over. But like you said, Jack won that one, which was nice to see him get a win after so many years racing yeah. the series. Um, and on a Stark, which was called cool, new manufacturer, electric bike, first win. Um, and that was Manchester, basically. And since then, you've been media man. So, yeah. so actually, you're the perfect person to talk through the rest of the tour, because you've been sat up in the seats watching it this year and not been in it as annoying as that is for you. Um, so just round one in Belfast, Conrad came out swinging. You kind of knew he would. Yeah. He showed so much speed last year racing you. Um, Woodcock moved up another spot into second and Bogle for third. So that was the first night at Belfast. Um, was you impressed particularly with, at that point, like Woodcock was getting quicker and quicker? Mm. Um, most impressive man on the night, that first night was Dylan, um, purely because He's not known for his like, he's always got speed. He always looks good. He's got good technique, but then he bought like a lot of um, race. I don't know, what do you call that? Race craft yeah. for that one. He, um, he looked more aggressive. He looked like he was up for the win. I think he only finished a couple of seconds behind, which was close because Comrade is Comrade. He's always got that speed, especially over the long distance. He's got that confidence. But for Dylan to put in a ride like he did that night and um, keep him honest all through the night, I think, uh, it was mega, and then it was a sign of good things to come. Look, we never want to see riders go out, particularly with an injury. You was you uh, was one of those. We then lost Conrad uh, for the second night at Belfast, which was a, something or nothing. I mean, mm. he rolled over his own foot going real slow. That can happen in any like motocross or arena cross country, really. Yeah, it's just a freak thing. Um, I mean, when I'm sat there, I'm like, well, Conrad, I've wrapped this up now. You know, he sort yeah. of got this in the bag. Up until that point, Harry hadn't found his form at that point. Um, and then you just, you couldn't believe it when it happened. You're just like, bloody hell, like, oh, but then the same thing, people would have thought the same with me. I'm so consistent. Yeah. Last year I made no mistakes, was never off the podium. Um, and then all of a sudden I made a silly mistake and then Comrade made a silly mistake. Um, it's Mark across, it does happen. Um, that was, it's just a shame when it does. And the momentum really kind of swing around at that point because you were out, Conrad was out, you know, we ended up, Kulas winning the second night, and Brunel with another sick, consistent ride, and it yeah. already started to shape up between those two at that point. Was that what you were thinking as well? Uh, I thought Kulas would find his form um, purely because he's a racer. Do you know what I mean? He always does that, and he's the tracks played into his hand as well, being a little bit rougher, um, being a little bit ruttier, moving on into um, Aberdeen, and um, I just know how solid he is a rider. I've raced him for a number of years, and I always know that he's going to be there no matter what. And with me and Comrade out, I think it would have given him a boost. Like, all right, it's my championship to, to take a run at now. Um, you've just got Jack hanging in there. Uh, I think the, the tracks coming up are going to suit Jack a little bit more than the previous ones. Um, so it's shaping up quite nicely. It is, because it's a good point. Because you said in his mind, he probably felt like it was his Kulas is his today. He's currently still not leading. Um, Brunel has a one-point lead over him. But the last two rounds in Aberdeen, Harry was pretty dominant winning both nights um harry was and i think track played into that as well because 
He's very good in the softer conditions. He spends a lot of time abroad, um, riding the sand in Lommel and as far away as that is from yeah. Arena Cross. When I walked the track at the end of the night, I couldn't believe how right it was. And um, he's just solid. Harry is Harry, he does what he does. And um, it doesn't surprise me that he, he had a, he, I don't know how to put it, he had like a step in front of everyone yeah. that whole weekend. Um, he had the edge over them. So not surprising seeing the track conditions. Um, and, uh, but Jack does what Jack does as well. He's always on the podium. He's not always the fastest man, but you look at the results at the end of the night, he puts himself on the podium. He did that last year and he's done it again this year to keep himself in that hunt. You're a defending champion. You've won championships many times before. Who would you rather be right now? Jack with a one point lead or the momentum and be Kulas chasing after him? Um, Bearing in mind the tracks that we've got coming up as well, a bit more hard pack. Yeah. So who, who would you rather? I don't Where know. would you rather be? A tricky Chase one. or being chased? I would rather be Harry in his current form. Right. But then saying that, me and Harry went head to head one championship. I think he won three rounds on the bounce. You would say we was then tied on points. He had the form. But then um, I can pull it out of the bag when I need yeah. to. And I'm, well, let's see if Jack can do the same. Well, I'm not actually going to put him on the spot uh, to choose a winner because that's always dangerous because I chose mm. him for a win and look what happened. So we're not doing that. Um, Team-wise, the Stark Future have got a 13-point lead over Mark McCann's 64 YouTube channel mm. and then Fuzzmask Gear Tech in third. Um, looking like Stark, new in, electric bike, like they're going to potentially win the team mm. championship. But they've got such a strong team. It's not just about the bike, is it? No. Um, I think the bike is what it is. It's good at the start, but I think there's benefits negatives racing it each weekend um so i don't think they have a overall advantage over anyone else i think jack's consistent you got bogle eddie even got himself on the podium before he um he crashed out so um stark i'm not sure if they count they had three riders so i'm not sure if they're counting all three <laughs> no, riders they're not. They're yeah not. but they're counting the two best of each night yeah, i so believe so looking at that i'm not sure how fair that is because they've had three to choose from each night so in a, in they should be leading it. Well, like. Dirt Store Kawasaki are currently in fifth. Um, yeah. Obviously, you, you know you, yourself and Mel went out, and you've got um, two replacements in. So the answer to that is next year you field a four man team, don't you? Yeah, you need to get um, onto it. I think them boys are going to creep up though. The Dirt Store yeah. team as well. Uh, their tracks are also coming. I think them boys will be stronger here in Birmingham, um, and they're finding their form. Obviously, I crashed out, Mel crashed out, so we had a um, bad couple of rounds and. They're, they're coming on. They're getting used to the bikes. I think we've got Subrez here this weekend. Um, I'll be quite surprised if he don't win yeah. and shake things up a little bit with his form um, and these track conditions. Maybe if we'd gone to one of the other tracks uh, previous to the now, the last two weekends, um, Harry might have had something for him and Comrade. But I think this weekend, the dirt here, I would put my eggs in um, Subrez's basket. Very quickly, we'll wrap this up by just, uh, of course, we've got other classes racing. Um, so quick overview. I mean, they've been like last weekend at Aberdeen. The pro am racing was probably Brilliant. the four races of absolute quality. So, anybody else that's caught your eye in those other classes? Like John Slade, obviously. Yeah. You know, John. so uh, who's been? Because you've been blogging. I mean, yeah. you've been seeing them more than anyone. I think all of them in their um, the little lad winning the E5 class. Yeah. He flies every week, and then you've got even second place uh, Cohen. Um, there's always a battle for that second spot. Mate, who's yeah. leading it always seems to have the edge. 65 class, you've got John, who's sort of a step above everyone, jumping the jumps. Um, 85 class was a good race in Aberdeen. Really good. Um, Harry Lee's looking Harry's good, good, but then Zane as well. Uh, the other little one, he yeah. managed to get his first win. Um, yeah, George, George Sherry. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just busy every class, and that Pro Am class is unbelievable to watch. <laughs> like, I didn't watch it that much in the past, but I won't miss it the last couple of rounds. Yeah. It's mega quite advice sometimes watching in it but we know you want to be back next mm. year in racing so um yeah there we go that's our little wrap up tommy's view on it you're going to be continuing to do more media work um but probably as not as much as mel because mel's new media mel so yeah probably be the last year he'll be doing this and we're replacing with mel pocock next year yeah it won't be a far off <laughs> well you'll both be if racing he has his way but he can't do that i'll be sub behind the, i'll be ed and filming mel constantly yeah. he's trying to take over he calls every day for ideas. I said, just settle down, mate. Don't worry about it. You're that. both going to be on the track racing in full season next year. Um, I enjoy, will, enjoy yeah. the rest of the, the time here at Birmingham. Always a pleasure, Tommy. There okay. you go. That's so where we're at. Championship recap at round seven here at Birmingham.